Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today it involves a gel plate and a virus. And I think you know which virus I'm talking about. And I really hope that you're hanging in there with all of the stay at home orders, that you're making your way through this and that you're staying healthy. And when I saw that face masks are now being recommended for us to wear anytime we go out in public, I thought, yeah, I need to make one of these because I'm not going out to get one. I'm letting those go for the medical professionals and I'm just going to make one for me to use. And then I looked at my fabric and I thought, mm, I need something really colorful. So I thought I'd gel print some fabric and turn them into face masks. So how do you gel print on fabric? What kind of paint do you use? That's all waiting for you in this video. Gel printing on fabric is a lot like gel printing on paper, except instead of using paper, you're going to use fabric. And if you want to be able to wash it a whole lot and have the color stay nice and vibrant, you're going to want to use a paint that's designed for fabric. Now, does that mean you have to have a special paint? Well, not exactly. You see, I took regular acrylic paint that I had and I put an additive into it to turn it into fabric paint. In just a moment, I'll show you how I mix those up. And any techniques that you use with acrylic paint for printing on paper, you can do that same kind of stuff when you want to do a gel print onto fabric. Like right now, what I'm doing here, this is how I make a rainbow gel print, except this time a piece of fabric is going on top of it. The fabric that I'm using is a white cotton, and I'm sure it has other more technical names for it, but I don't know what they are. The way I usually buy my fabric is I just find a white fabric that's on sale and that's cotton and I call it good to go. The reason why I like to buy white cotton fabrics is because cotton will take things like paint and dyes and colors so much better than synthetic fibers. Now just like with paper, the first print has the most paint on it so it tends to be the most vibrant and your second print will have a softer look to it because it has less paint on it and that's your ghost pull. Well, let's talk about the paint now. I've got an entire rainbow there of colors that I've mixed up. And the reason why I mix them up instead of buying fabric paint is frankly, it's just easier for me. Rather than trying to manage a whole different brands or types of paints, I'm just happier when I take colors that I love and mix it up myself with an additive. I'm gonna take a two ounce paint bottle here. And by the way, travel size shampoo bottles work great for this too. And I'm gonna squirt some paint in there. You can fill it halfway up, part of the way up, it doesn't really matter. This is an extremely forgiving thing. So if you just want a little bit in there, that's all you need to mix up. And so, yeah, you saw that precision measuring, right? I am now going to take about a one to one ratio here of paint to the GAC 900. And this is a fabric painting medium created by Golden so that when you add it to your acrylic paint, that makes the paint work better on fabric. So basically it turns your regular acrylic paint into a fabric paint. And as long as you can mix that acrylic paint in with that GAC 900 medium, you can use any kind of paint. The stuff I'm using here, it's not fancy stuff. It's Liquitex Basic, Amsterdam Standard, and Plaza Art Paint. Basically, whatever paint you've got that you like using, if you've got a fabric medium like GAC 900, mix some of it in there with it, and you can use that paint on fabric. Now, I'm going to play around with putting multiple colors here on the plate, and I'm just going to brayer them around. This is the same thing I would do if I was working with paint that didn't have the GAC 900 in it. And it's the same kind of techniques that I use if I'm working with paper. Now, usually I'm very heavy handed with paint and I put way more on there than I intend to. But this time I'm having the opposite effect where I'm just not quite getting as much paint as what I want. So I keep having to add a little bit here and there. Gel printing is extremely forgiving. If you want a little more paint, you add a little more paint. And if you think you've got too much paint on there, you simply take a print and pull some of it off. And anytime there is still wet paint left on that plate, you bet I'm going to put something on there to take that print. Now, once I lift this one up, there's still wet paint on there, but it's not going to give me a full print. So what I'm going to do is create sort of a cleanup one where I'm just going to go around the edges and pull stuff up. On prints like these, I tend to have large areas without paint on them. You can see how kind of in the middle there's not much there, but never fear, we're going to get more stuff on there before we're done. Now the stencil that I'm using is called Words to Live By, and you might think, hey, it's backwards on there, Carolyn. Those words, they're not going the right way. And that is absolutely correct. That is completely and totally backwards. 
And when you're doing words in a gel print, you want to make sure the words are on there backwards. And this is one of the easiest ways to do some quick stenciling too, because I put that stencil on the naked gel plate, and then I put the paint on top of it. And when I lift that stencil away, I'm going to have a quick and easy way to grab that pattern onto the fabric. And just like I would build up layers if I was working with paper in a gel plate, the same is true for fabric. Now this next one that I'm going to do, that was the cleanup piece of fabric that had the big white area in the middle that just had sort of random bits on it. That is going to create this third piece. And it's actually my favorite piece of all three of the ones I've just done here. Let me show you another way that you can use stencils with a gel plate. This time putting the paint on the plate first. And then I'm going to put the stencil on top of it. Then I'm going to take the fabric and I'm just going to push it down in some of the areas. And I'm just kind of getting some of the pattern. I'm not really worried about getting every little speck of it because what I'm going to do is keep repeating this over and over again until I fill that entire piece of fabric in. Now, one of the perks of doing it this way is that it's different every single time that you do it. And it's really fast. It's just the quickest, fastest way to stencil. When you start to feel like you're running out of paint on it, you simply brayer some more on there. It's almost like having an ink pad underneath the stencil so you can just keep pressing that fabric in there and grabbing bits and pieces of the pattern until you've got your fabric completely filled the way that you want it. Now, all of the stencils that I've been using in this video are ones available over at Stencil Girl Products, and some of them I've designed, and some of them are designed by Mary Beth Shaw, like this one. And over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com, I've got links to the supplies that are used to make it easy for you if you're looking to find these products. What I'm doing now is using up all the paint that's there. So these are cleanup prints. I don't really care what they look like. My goal here is to just simply get the paint that's on that plate off and not waste any of it because this will become a layer that I'm going to put something else on top of. And that's code for, I don't really like how it looks the way it is, so I'm going to put something else on top of it. And a little spoiler alert for you, it's not really going to help it that much. As I put that green and yellow on there, when I add it to that print, it's not really going to do anything for it. It's still going to be very eh to me. And when there's a print that doesn't have that, oh my goodness, I'm in love with it kind of feeling, it just means more layers have to go onto it. Because a print is never done until you decide. Now, even though I didn't like the first print that I did, I definitely loved the ghost print here. As I was just blotting up and cleaning up the bits of paint that were on there, the subtle look on this one, now this one I really liked. Now, earlier in the video, I had too little paint on there for what I wanted to do. And this time, I've got more paint on there than what I want. And if you've ever got more paint than what you want, simply take a print and pull some of it off. So now when I put this piece on, it's going to get that nice, soft, ghost look kind of thing to it. And I'm just going to get a quick and subtle bit of color on here. Once the paint is dry on the fabric, then you can follow the directions on the GAC 900 to heat set it so that it is very, very permanent. So how did that piece of fabric become a face mask? Well, if I'd paid more attention in home ec class and practiced some of those skills over the years, I could probably explain it to you. Except I don't sew that much, and so I didn't know how to make one of these. And I want to point you in the direction of a really amazing video for how to make these things. Melanie Ham has made the most wonderful video that clearly explains how to put one of these things together, even if you're a complete beginner like me. Her video is about seven minutes long, and it takes about 10 minutes to put one of these masks together. Now, is her video the only one that's out there about making a face mask? Absolutely not. There are lots and lots of options out there, but I wanted to point you to the one that I found really, really easy to do. And no matter what, no matter which kind you make, I just hope that you're safe. That as we're going through this virus craziness right now, I really hope that you and your family are safe and healthy. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button so you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. And of course, you can find more fun over on the website at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.